But isn't this, isn't a, a lot of this proof of a kind of atrophying of the spirit? And what I mean by that is whether it's Black people doing it or white people doing it, there is a fundamental impoverishment of relationship at the heart of this. And so I can imagine people experiencing material benefit like you like you've been pointing to by sort of using their blackness or using their whiteness to advance a particular political agenda but there is a there is still kind of psychological malnourishment so even if someone is able to you know get a bigger salary or um you know get promoted to the c-suite or whatever in this business context they're still at the end of the day a kind of spiritual impo impoverishment that ends up harming the people even that have material power, even that are doing the bullying, as Coleman points out. And so I'm wondering, number one, what you think of that. But I'm also wondering, what is the role that you think social media plays in all of this, right? Because if I'm in a specific environment for a long time, it's going to shape the way I behave. It's going to shape my instincts, right? It's going to it's going to just affect my instincts. I notice that if I'm on Twitter for way too long, I will totally be incentivized or just subconsciously start acting in an us versus them kind of way. And so I have to be disciplined about the amount of hours that I spend on social media. So the first question is, you know, isn't there still ultimately a kind of spiritual impoverishment, even if people are materially benefiting? And the second question is, what role do you think social media plays in shaping this, um, this uh, diminishment of relationship, of our capacity to be in relationship with each other as citizens of a country and of a nation. I could take a stab at it. I think uh, when it comes to spiritual impoverishment, I'm not sure I have a really clear answer to that. But one thing I will say is I think a lot of people are, are you know, this, the spiritual hole in the human mind for a lot of people is being filled by activism, by political activism. And um, I guess th this is, I was actually just talking to a religious person yesterday about this to, to a Christian. And we were talking about the fact that even though I think religion is not true, I don't think any of the religions are, are factual. It's possible that if you take away all the bad stuff in the Bible and just leave the parts about, uh, you know, loving your neighbor as yourself and really taking seriously being kinder than you would want to be or you would tend to be that that can be a kind of unifying force for people uh, that are that would otherwise uh, not like each other but if so if your spiritual hole is being filled by something that is is telling you to be kinder and more open um, that's one thing that's it's it's hard to get too mad at that uh, even even as an atheist but if, if it's being filled by an ideology which wants to sharpen the divisions between races wants to insist that you know black people and white people we're just you know separate we don't have any anything in common deeply we should really basically keep to ourselves and it's basically a competition between our two groups for power um that's very motivating for people and it's it's uh it's not unifying at all so i'm not sure whether it's spiritual impoverishment or the the kind of the wrong type of spirit spirituality mm. because you know I mean, for what it's worth there are many religions that do this also there are religions that have a purely divisive message like sure. our sect of our religion is the one mm -hmm. that is correct about everything and the rest of the world is simply misled so it's it's a little bit of another version of that but different because it has a it's a political slant rather than a religious one mm -hmm. and then on, on social media what i would say is to me i think the the most, imp maybe the most important and unhealthy aspect of social media is that everything that gets promoted to you is the worst version of the other side. It's never the thoughtful critique of your perspective that enters your newsfeed. It's always the article that is the most outrageous fringe of the thing you hate that makes it into your social media uh, feed. So your picture of the other side is always, you're always seeing them at their worst and you're almost never seeing them at their best, which just gives you a which almost inevitably makes you hate the people you hate or the 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 movements you hate worse well i guess i'll just jump in as a christian and i'll start giving my sunday sermon to, to 
Coleman, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> well, I am Christian. And even that is sometimes hard to say because that's been so tainted, but I believe in Jesus Christ. And it's a long story why I won't get into it. But I think my suspicions on certain things and things I believed in was because my faith was getting stronger to where things weren't morally aligning with me anymore. And so, like I said, with the white silence is violence and things that just didn't make sense. I was like, but these people are still people though. Like, why am I treating them the way I would not ever allow someone to treat me? Um, so yes, the impoverishment of that spiritually was feel the, feeling guilt and shame for things. Even if I was saying things publicly that I didn't really agree with privately, I still felt guilt and shame. And I'm thankful actually for that, for that um, feeling, because that made me vet myself and interrogate myself and challenge myself. So um, it can be a good thing. But then with Coleman, what he said, people replace that with things that aren't um, efficient. And I think we're seeing that right now. People are utilizing activism or you are utilizing patriotism, being a patriot and wanting to find some type of community and wanting to find some type of belonging. And I think just people are just generally just lost. And and I, I said this in an interview before, but I really feel like people really want to be good so bad mm. and that they are willing to sacrifice unbeknownst to them or beknownst to them, sacrifice someone else's humanity to be good. And I know that doesn't make sense, but I'm seeing that a lot in culture. And yeah. And with social media, everyone just get off Twitter and that would be, I mean, that's not going to happen. I, I'm on Twitter and actually, Chloe, I saw your tweet about how you detox two weeks. Yeah. I think you said that. I'm going to try to do that or at least a week. But yeah, I definitely, or, or two days or two hours, but I definitely see social media just, it completely takes out the humanity of anyone. All you see is someone's Twitter handle and that's what they are or their profile picture and that's what they are. Or that tweet is who they are. And it's easy to fight at that tweet and that person and say all these things you would never say to their face. Like all of these beefs that people have, they're not that bold in real life or they're not that cold in real life. They're really actually good people. And for me, there's people that I know that I have muted on social media because I'm like, you're actually a better person than this. And I cannot mm -hmm. stand you on here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But you don't, but you don't tell them, hey, homie, I'm going to block you because then that just starts a whole other thing. Yeah. But there's a lot of people that I love that I do not follow on social media because I'm like, your online persona is not where it's at. Like, this is not good. And perhaps I can have these conversations with them. But yeah, social media can be good and it can be evil. So yeah, it, I, I feel as though I'm always promoting Martin Gurry's book, Revolt of the Public. And I'll just plug it again here. Um, I, I think a lot of the general concern that we have about social media could probably be broadened to um, include a lot of the changes that have taken place over the course of the last couple of decades with respect to the increase in the volume of information that's available in the number of quote unquote authoritative sources um, that are available to us. Um, and um, I think kind of a splintering of our attention across all of these different spectrums and us in many respects, just trying desperately to have some sense of stability in the midst of all of that change. Um, and I think we're kind of grappling with uh, this crisis of authority in the sense that a lot of the traditional places where we would derive some sense of, oh, that's what is true uh, right. about the world. We don't have agreement on that anymore. And there have been many things that have happened that have degraded the authority of some of the institutions we used to depend on, whether they be religious institutions, and there's certainly been some high profile scandals there, or bureaucratic government institutions, where we've seen them make pretty profound errors, in some cases systematically, and that's eroded our confidence as well. I think the, the story of the next couple of decades, and perhaps of the, the current generations who are here, is going to be um, about like how we find a way to live in the new universe where we're always online, where we're super connected with one another, where we do have these, this bizarre new set of incentives that we're responding to online, where we get to decide what sort of persona we're going to put on, whether we're going to be firebrands or attacking the bad guys and, you know, performing and being our most acrimonious selves on social media, or whether there are ways that we can use those platforms as we do sometimes to 
forge new communities that couldn't have existed before to make friends across impossible transoms that couldn't be traversed before. Um, I think that there's, there are opportunities and perils here and there are plenty of reason um, I think to hope that we'll see some of those kind of better, brighter threads like start to be the ones that get tugged on more. Um, just because there's so much exhaustion, um, I think uh, I'm certainly exhausted by a lot of the the political culture war stuff. Um, I think that there are important things that are worth advocating for, um, even more than advocating against in some respects. Um, but at the same time, I'm while I'm concerned about some of the trends that I see online, I also want to center it and say that it's it's mostly about us and how we respond to it. And sometimes a detox is what's necessary, and sometimes uh, just a really determined effort to to rebrand yourself online. Um, maybe to publicly commit to some sort of new ethos where, where the principal thing you're doing is interacting with the stuff that is really inspiring to you uh, beyond the stuff that is kind of most uh, disconcerting. Like that might be valuable um, and perhaps even more valuable than just kind of disconnecting from it completely. Mm -hmm.